Retarded is a nice word. It's a funny word. I'm partially retarded, so if anyone can judge, it's someone who's retarded enough to have personal roots in the subject matter, but not retarded enough to not know what retarded means. I've said that retarded is like my n-word, but contrary to that example, I think everyone should say retarded whenever they want, regardless of their own intellectual disabilities, because it's a pejorative that stays within its defined category. Like, if you have a problem with someone calling something gay as a synonym for dumb or lame, at least you have the dictionary on your side in that argument, but when you call something retarded as a synonym for stupid, it's a synonym for stupid. It's accurate. Calling something retarded is just you saying you feel the foundation of that idea or action could have easily come from an underdeveloped brain. It's metaphorical and viable. People who get offended at words are auto-powered vacuums trying to suck up harmful materials so it becomes about them. Eminem uses the word retarded in a recent song of his, which he's done before, but now that the earth has been alive longer, we're supposed to have discarded these so-called outdated terms into the fires of obsolescence. Outdated? Groovy is outdated. Tubular is outdated. Retarded just keeps going strong. It's still such a fun word, and will be until a replacement term is coined that isn't nine syllables long. Intellectually disabled. That's what they want you to blurt out. Man, this shit is intellectually disabled, bro. Put that in a rap. But of course, anytime anyone says retarded, you see the token response of like a parent with a picture of her kid with Down syndrome being like, my son is not a joke. I don't know how to break it to you, but your son is not the inspiration for Eminem's Walk on Water. You act like Eminem walked up to your house, knocked on the door, and then when you and your son opened it, he was just like, Excuse me, miss, beg your pardon, but your son's fucking retarded. Or something like that. Just, just freestyling. Came upon this home and this kid with Down syndrome just opened up the door, acting all retarded. I think I have an act for this. Why are you taking it personally? Why does everything even remotely related to your situation have to become front and center about you? People tweeting at Beyonce, like, how could you record a song with a guy who uses the R word? Here's a proposition for you. You specifically watching this video right now, you, I'll give you millions of dollars in sales revenue if you just say retarded. That's all you have to do. Just say retarded with an earshot of a microphone and you can have residual checks for decades. Still being stubborn because you're a dummy dum-dum? Okay, I'll sweeten the deal for you. You don't have to say retarded yourself. All you have to do is be in the same room as someone who says retarded while you just sing a couple choruses of a normal non-retarded using song. I only make this about money to get normal people on board. I know Beyonce is rolling in it, doesn't need a feature on an Eminem track to keep her mansion, but are you really gonna tell me you won't say the word retarded for millions of dollars? You won't see your family taken care of for years? You won't save your daughter's life with a medical procedure you could now afford? No, you aren't really gonna tell me that because that would be colossally retarded. Some people are like, well, I said it, but I had my fingers crossed. Dude, that is two different plateaus of childish at the same time. This is a rough transition, but the whole fingers crossed thing is so stupid I can't even write more than one packed paragraph about how stupid that shit is. I know it's like a kid thing, but I've seen it persist into adulthood, and people take it seriously like it actually lets them off the hook. I don't even get it, because not only do you cross your fingers to break a promise, you cross your fingers when you hope nothing bad will happen, which means while you're crossing your fingers to get out of doing a favor to your friend, your friend could be crossing their fingers hoping you'll follow through with that favor, and then it's just a magical war between two finger wizards, whose power is the strongest and will turn the tides of fate because all humanity has to do to remake the world to their desire is have two of their fingers overlap each other and that's how arrogant our species is. It's weird because you cross your fingers to break promises, but when you're swearing on keeping them, you cross your heart. So crossing can't even make up its mind on what the hell it does. This is as Seinfeld as my comedy gets right here. Why is crossing body parts so important in our culture? Break a promise, cross your fingers. Keep a promise, cross your heart. And when you have to pee, cross your legs. You think I'm being stupid now? Wait till I cross my eyes. We even use it as a warning. You better not cross me. And if somebody crosses me and I get mad, I'm being cross. You cross me, now I'm cross. Don't cross your arms at me now, I'm even more cross. Is that a cross around your neck? Jesus died on the cross. I'm looking at this part of this script and it reads like a children's book. But who knew cross was such an all-encompassing part of our culture? I haven't typed that many exclamation points in my whole life. It's not my comedic style. I prefer periods, even at the end of questions, because then it reads as deadpan as I'm probably delivering it. Like, what are you doing? 
That's a question that ends with a period, and if you saw it typed, you'd recognize the tone immediately. Dude, everything in this world is so fucking interesting, but only when I think so in the moment, otherwise it's dull laugh. But if you ever find yourself in the mood where you're like, you know what, the world is a magnificent place, do yourself a favor and then go research the most usually boring thing you can think of, and you might find that it's actually fascinating if you take it in on a deep enough level. Real quick going back to the retarded thing. Some people have started using autistic as a replacement term, like, oh, this is autistic. But when they use it in the noun form, talking to someone, they're like, man, you're such an autist. But that just sounds like you have a speech impediment. You're trying to call me an artist. That guy's a great musical artist. Like, now you sound retarded. But calling me an artist is technically correct, whether you can pronounce your R's or not. It's just douchey. Like, just say retarded. It's way more fun. Autistic as a general descriptive term was invented by people who thought, we need to cut deeper if possible. And it does because it's just unpleasant to hear, even though it's the more scientific term. It's like if a guy's talking dirty to someone and he's all, hmm. I want you to touch my penis. Like, please say dick instead. Don't bring science into the bedroom. Sometimes slang is invented to improve the language. If you're using the word autistic as an insult when you know retarded is available, you're just trying to be the biggest penis possible. See? Doesn't sound right there either. Dick. You're trying to be a dick. I'm bouncing all over the place this episode, so to keep that random momentum going, do you ever think about what life would be like if you were found guilty of a heinous crime and you did do it? Like, just thinking about how people you know would react, no matter what it is, and then just resigning yourself to being universally hated and despised. I really like the thought of seeing positive emotions about a person turning sour in real time as they discover some new terrible thing about them. Like, we've all done things where it's like, I'm telling zero people about that shit ever, but then if you did actually come out and say something to someone, you could control that moment and be its orchestrator. Like, this is the behavioral science behind why people sometimes feel compelled to confess to crimes or cheating on their spouses. You know it feels good to say it despite the fallout because it's off your chest and the weight's been lifted, right? But it can go deeper than that. If you really take charge of the event of telling someone some deep, dark secret of yours or just any old thing that would be bad if certain people found out, you can create a high for yourself that is on the level of drugs. You can manipulate the adrenaline in your body and the endorphins of impending truth and mix them together to create a cocktail like you've never gotten wasted off of before. It sounds menacing almost to describe it like that, but catharsis can be manufactured to optimum output if you know what you're doing beforehand. So if any of you out there have something you need to finally come clean on, even if it's something inevitable like coming out of the closet or telling someone you're pregnant, seize control of the moment. You can turn an uncomfortable conversation into immense relief by accepting the consequences beforehand and embracing the fall of your character in the eyes of the other person. Tell your girlfriend you cheated with a smile on your face. She'll think you're a crazy person and she'll be much less hurt about the cheating and more thankful she just got out of the path of a bullet. You've heard your whole life that the truth shall set you free. Make that freedom even sweeter with some emotional narcotics on the side. It sounds insane because because it is. It taps into some psychotic behavior, but utilizing craziness in a calculated way can feel so good. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>